Molly Harris is a PhD candidate in classics at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Her dissertation focuses on the aftermath of the Trojan War within Greek tragedy, particularly the way that tragedy exposes the extensive and negative effects of war on households and communities. So very much following on in research, at least from what we've just spoken about. Besides her teaching and research, Molly leads an off-campus reading group at the Wisconsin Veterans Museum. This is the project that she will talk about today. It's called The Warrior Book Club, Advancing Social Justice for Veterans Through Collaboration. Thank you, Molly. Thank you, Jessica. Um, I do have a handout. I'm not sure if there are enough copies, so um, please do share with people around you, and I'm happy to send you a copy or print you a copy afterwards. Um, and I'll be saying aloud much of what's on the handout. So, The Warrior Book Club is a monthly book club in Madison, Wisconsin, that brings together veterans, service providers, and other members of the general public for conversations about war literature, both classical literature and contemporary. The club began in 2016 with support from the University of Wisconsin-Madison's Center for the Humanities and in collaboration with the Wisconsin Veterans Museum. The book club is now entering its fourth season, so it's been up and running for about a year and a half. In addition to describing some of the successes of the book club, the conversations it's fostered, and the benefits it has brought to the Madison and university communities, I'd like to, in this talk, give particular attention uh, to the process of launching the project and some of the challenges that we worked through during that process. Some of these challenges are specific to using classical literature to promote social, social justice, and others concern partnerships between university scholars and community organizations more broadly. Although the club is still growing and adapting and changing, and that often happens through a process of trial and error, Overall, I believe that we've created a rewarding experience for those involved, and I look forward to sharing that with you. So let's begin with war in the ancient world. From the Trojan War to the Peloponnesian War to the civil wars of the Roman Republic, over the centuries, war was deeply entwined in the lives of Greeks and Romans, and therefore pervasive in their cultural products, such as literature. One might argue the same about the United States. American history classes are often structured around landmark wars, the Revolutionary War, the Civil War, World War I and II, and Vietnam. And our cultural products, too, reflect an interest in war, both historical and fictional. Just this past year, 2017, saw the release of the World War II movie Dunkirk to high acclaim, as well as another installment in the ever-successful Star Wars franchise, and of course, War of the Planet of the Apes. In recent decades, attention has been given both through scholarship and through community projects, to the connection between classical literature and the modern war experience. Not just the movies we watch, but the actual lived experience of active military, veterans, family members, and service providers. To give a brief overview of the work that has been done so far, research scholarship owes much to a non-classicist, Jonathan Shea, a clinical psychologist who works with Vietnam veterans. His 1994 book, Achilles in Vietnam, draws comparisons between the experiences of characters in the Iliad to those of Shea's clients, particularly regarding the betrayal of what's right. He continues this line of thinking in Odysseus in America, his 2002 work, in which he examines the homecomings of Odysseus and modern veterans with attention to the lack of trust and violence shown by war veterans and the potential healing process. Shea also recognizes differences in military structures and societal values and beliefs between the two contexts, ancient Greece on the one hand, and America during and after Vietnam on the other. Classic scholarship in this vein includes titles from Milos to Mylai, which incorporates the author's own personal experience and finds parallels to the modern day beyond the epic genre and the male hero. Meinick and Constance edited volume Combat Trauma in the Ancient Greeks, includes essays exploring parallels and differences between ancient and modern contexts, particularly through Greek drama. And Cassidy and Wynick's volume, Our Ancient Wars, is interestingly divided into two halves, rethinking the ancient in view of the modern and rethinking the modern in view of the ancient, demonstrating the fruitfulness of this type of study for our understanding of both the past and present. Given this research, classical literature has clear relevance to modern war and homecoming experiences, as we just saw in the last presentation as well. Um, 
And individuals and organizations have sought to turn that relevance into a social good through community projects and groups, some of which have provided inspiration for the Warrior Book Club. Meinick has argued that Greek tragedy performed a cathartic role for its Athenian audiences and can continue to do so for modern audience today. His Ancient Greeks, Modern Lives, an NEH-supported program of the Aquila Theater in New York, has sponsored national lectures, reading groups, and performances of Greek tragedy across the country for veterans and the general public to spark conversations about war and its effects. Brian Dory's Theater of War, you might call a public health project, addressing the challenges that face marginalized populations with performances and readings of Greek tragedy for military and civilian audiences in the U.S. and abroad, the project has been featured recently in a New York Times video essay. And you're likely all familiar with Roberta Stewart's work. She is the recipient of the 2017 SCS Outreach Prize, and for the last 10 years had led, has led reading groups of the Iliad and Odyssey with combat veterans. My own interest in these topics began from a convergence of happenings. First, I attended a session on outreach at the SCS annual meeting uh, back in 2012, heard about the Ancient Greeks Modern Lives program, the Theater of War program, and thought this is pretty cool stuff. Around the same time, I was on a kick of reading modern war novels, which I was greatly enjoying. And the next summer, my university hosted a book fair where I looked through World War II era propaganda posters and started thinking more about the place of war in societies over time. World War II, in many ways, defined a generation of Americans. Yet I don't expect to be considered part of the Iraq or Afghanistan generation, despite the fact that I have lived my teens and 20s while America was at war. Given where I grew up and went to college, war was one of the farthest things from my mind and from the minds of many of my friends and family members. And consequently and importantly, the experience of those who sent family members to war and those returning from war was equally foreign to me. Even among Facebook friends, I could count on one hand the number who had served. I was struck by the gap that exists today between those familiar with the military and those not, a gap that was smaller if not non-existent in other times and places, modern and ancient. I was also struck by the ability of literature, both the war novels I read for leisure and the Greek and Latin literature that I studied, to bridge this gap and convey something meaningful about war experiences. So enter the Warrior Book Club. The University of Wisconsin-Madison has a vibrant public humanities community through its Center for the Humanities, including a fellowship program called the Public Humanities Exchange, or HEX, that funds graduate student projects in the community. I've included the HEX mission statement on your handout, and I will highlight that the program is looking for innovative projects and for true partnerships between the community and graduate students with projects serving both sides of that partnership. I applied to the HEX program with a proposal largely similar to Stewart's group, a, re a weekly reading group for combat veterans reading the Odyssey over the course of 10 to 12 weeks. The project was granted funding, but by the time it launched, the Warrior Book Club looked quite different. Instead of weekly, we would meet monthly. Instead of just the Odyssey, we would read a whole new book each month, some ancient and some modern, and instead of just veterans, the book group would be open to anyone interested veteran or not. And these changes largely came about because of the second element of the HEX goals, the partnership with the community organization. I partnered with the Wisconsin Veterans Museum, which is located in Madison, working primarily with their curator of education, Aaron Hogue, to develop the book club. In addition to typical exhibits and tours that you might expect from the museum, the Wisconsin Veterans Museum also offers a range of events for adults and children, maintains a research center used by staff, scholars, and the public, and houses an extensive collection of oral histories. I've included the mission statement for the museum on your handout, and will emphasize the museum's aim to commemorate, acknowledge, and affirm the role of Wisconsin citizens in American military history, past and present. So this immediately raises the question of what do the classics have to do with Wisconsinites serving in the American military? Thus, developing a successful book club involved integrating the visions and goals of all of the what we might call stakeholders, myself, the university, the museum, and the participants. Personally, I was interested in sharing a work of ancient literature with non-classicists, 
with the goal of bringing value to people's lives and to the texts. Though I had expertise as a classicist, I was also aware of my position as a non-veteran. To prepare, I took a graduate seminar in public humanities and a course in American military history, through which I was reminded of the consistent daily workload of an undergraduate history course, but also had the opportunity to conduct an interview with a classic student and veteran about his experience reading classical literature. Though I had the full support of the faculty of my department in this endeavor, which I'm very grateful for and I realize is not always a given, the work for the Warrior Book Club had to take place on top of typical graduate coursework, exams, and research. I'd argue that this balance is one challenge for classic scholars engaging in social justice work, as we've already heard a few times this morning, and is certainly one for graduate students. And this, this time balance is something that we need to consider given the number of PhDs who are entering fields outside of academia. And uh, yeah, this is also the ability to give time to social justice is also something that came up yesterday at the uh, Classics and Social Justice open meeting. So returning to the stakeholders in the book club, as a university funded project, the book club needed also to meet the expectations of the university. We had the responsibility to maintain the highest level of research and thinking in accordance with the standards of UW-Madison. In addition, the HEX program pushed for ambitious and innovative projects and encouraged risk-taking. The museum, on the other hand, had more conservative and practical goals to expand their programming for veterans and the community. They particularly noticed, noted their interest in attracting more young veterans and family members, people in their 20s, 30s, 40s. Um, and finally, uh, what one could argue is the most important party in this endeavor, the community and the participants. And this was a bit of a question mark in our case and a place where I relied heavily on the museum's knowledge of the veteran community in Madison and their contacts with other veterans organizations. So given their experience providing services to veterans, the museum had the greatest input in the logistical details of the club and decided that a monthly book club on weekday evenings would fit best with their programming. We did reach out through emails, surveys, meetings with other local groups, such as the VA hospital, a local substance-free organization called Dry Hooch, and the Campus Vets group regarding details like timing, dates, location, literary interests. But responses to surveys were low, which is something I've learned is common for public organizations without targeted and persistent communication. And the opinions at meetings were varied. And so um, we sort of picked something that people had expressed some interest in. We decided to try out Wednesday evenings at the museum and, and see how things went. The museum offered spaces for the club to meet, the research center for a cozier circle of couches and lounge chairs, and the education center for a setup of tables and chairs and the perk of allowing food. And we've used both settings over the course of the club and participants have been happy um, with the more private space as opposed to we suggested some options of a public library or coffee shop, um, but they've, they've enjoyed the, the space that we have. Selecting books was a more collaborative process. In presenting the idea of classical literature to the various museum staff, I encountered two competing impressions of classics. On the one hand, ancient literature can appear daunting and prohibitively foreign to those who do not study it. When I mentioned the Odyssey, for example, I witnessed a look of shock and almost horror on one person's face as she recalled her experience chugging through the book back in high school. But on the other hand, the very antiquity and elevated status of classical literature can lead to idealizing these texts and presenting them as the ready solution to a, class, to a social justice issue. And to achieve a balance with this, we decided to organize the book club in seasons, which e with each season having a distinct theme related to war, and containing at least one classical selection alongside modern works. Since we would be meeting only once per month, the Odyssey did seem like a hefty choice at the beginning. So inspired by the Ancient Greeks and Modern Lives program and Theater of War, we have opted so far for plays as the ancient representatives. But I will say the true challenge has been finding modern works that are of a reasonable length. Um, many have exceeded three or 400 pages, and we have to work with that. On your handout, you'll find the themes and books that we have discussed so far. 
And I'd like to now take you through the way the book club has evolved over the course of these seasons and share with you some of the conversations we have had. Our first season over there focused on the experiences of soldiers at war with Sophocles' Philoctetes, the contemporary classic, The Things They Carried, and a recent collection of short stories, Redeployment, which is an excellent book, one of my favorites that we've read. Conversations flowed naturally and carried across meetings. We talked about language, truth, and storytelling, as well as the expectations of others at home when one is at war, whether those are expectations to live up to a parent or return with a sense of glory or accomplishment. Participants connected the discussion to their own lives, sharing their thoughts on the thank you for your service line that's so frequently said today. And they remarked, um, which was pleasing to me, they remarked that the ancient play was easier than expected. And I think the first thing that anyone ever said in our discussion was, of, of Philoctetes was, Odysseus is such a jerk, um, <laughs> which, which got the conversation going um, about that play. There was room to grow, though. We only had five consistent participants, three of whom were museum staff or volunteers, so already connected with the museum, and only one of whom was a veteran. Um, I also realized that people wanted more content. Since my primary experience leading discussions until this point had been as a teaching assistant, I had been very cautious of making this of avoiding making this group too much like school. Um, but people were hungry to learn and wanted guidance along the way. Um, so to, to address the issue of participants, uh, recruiting participants was somewhat of an unexpected challenge for me. I had assumed, perhaps naively, that the museum would be able to do a lot of this work and relatively easily. Um, but I found that getting people to take time from their lives to come to programs, even when they say, hey, that sounds cool, I'd like to do it, um, it can still take a lot of behind the scenes work. So we had to create and maintain registration lists, send email reminders and follow-ups, print and post flyers, uh, provide perks like free books and food, um, and make sure that the books were distributed so that people could actually read them in time for the discussion. Um, but with these efforts and some special outside attention that I'll talk about, the book club really started to take off during our second season. Uh, for our second season, the theme, uh, re-entry, or what classicists might call homecoming, uh, offered a complement to our first season. In addition to Sophocles' Ajax and Leslie Marvin Silko's Ceremony, we chose a book by a local Madison author for our third selection, Aaron Salello's Learning to Stay. A Madison theater company, Forward Theater, was performing a stage adaptation of this book that spring, including a free performance for veterans, active military, service providers, and family members. And so we partnered with Forward Theater, helping run the registration for that event, and in turn, expanding our reach um, in advertising the book club. We also invited the author, Aaron Solello, to participate in part of the discussion of the book, uh, which attracted people to the club. A second development during this season that increased participation was media attention. The book club first received a feature in the University of Wisconsin News and then was picked up by other sources, a feature in the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel and a segment in the local television news. This was very exciting for the club, but also raised issues about who owned the book club. All three reporters wanted access to one of our meetings to sit in on the discussion, take photographs and talk to participants before and after. And the museum granted much of this access, but I was concerned about how the presence of the media would affect the group dynamic and the comfort of participants, even when reporters promised only to quote and name those who wished to be identified. I also felt very much out of my element as an academic. I didn't know how to talk to the press when I was interviewed. Um, so I think that the public attention can be very helpful and sometimes essential for the success and growth of a program like this. Um, and as classicists become more involved in public outreach, we should think about how we can prepare ourselves and our students to communicate what we do most effectively um, with the public. By our third season this past fall, we had over 20 people on the mailing list and about 8 to 10 regular participants. A healthy mix of veterans and non-veterans, and a variety of ages, branches and locations of service, and genders. War can be a heavy topic, so we went with the theme of humor and satire, reading Catch-22, Lysistrata, Fobbit, and M.A.S.H. 
Over the course of seasons two and three, we added more supplemental content to our discussions, as encouraged by participants. I began sending reading questions in advance about themes, characters, and specific passages, um, and also shared uh, more specific content to classics, such as historical timelines, biographies of authors, images of relevant art and architecture, and passages from other works. The topic of translation has been particularly interesting to the group, and I began sharing handouts that would compare several translations of a single passage on one page. During our conversation about Lysistrata translations, and particularly the obscenities, one participant had an aha moment where he reflected on, his, on the process his Iraqi interpreter would have gone through and recalled an instance when his interpreter was translating graffiti for him and encountered explicit language. The idea for the Warrior Book Club began as a social justice project using classical literature to speak to modern veterans' experiences. Yet as the club developed and came to fruition, one of the unexpected successes has been the way it serves not veterans exclusively, but the entire community, a community that includes veterans. A single discussion will see veterans checking a book versus their own experiences and reevaluating their personal memories from serving, as well as non-veterans asking questions and sharing their own perspectives. The literature sparks dialogue between people who might otherwise never interact and about topics that might otherwise not be broached. People often arrive early and stay late chatting with other members of the group. I have also seen among participants a growing curiosity about literature, including an appreciation for ancient literature and for critical literary analysis. My own research and teaching has grown from engaging in book club discussions as well. For example, a participant brought up the way that women are sexually objectified and not taken seriously as warriors in Lysistrata, and um, brought up that this is a problem that still persists in the military today. This reinforced for me that we cannot always say, well, this was back then, or this was a different context to excuse troubling behavior when talking about Greek literature. The Warrior Book Club is continuing this spring with the theme of women's perspectives um, since that has been lacking in our books so far, and most of our books have been written by men with male protagonists. And we have goals for more consistent participation and hope to begin reaching beyond Madison with something like a website and look forward to the continuing valuable conversations. So thank you, and I welcome questions, comments, suggestions, and from there. Yeah. That's a great question, um, and something that I have definitely been thinking about because I want this to continue um, as well. Um, as far as I know, with the HEX program itself, there's nothing in place um, to guarantee that projects continue, and there are a lot of projects that last for a semester or last for a year. They offer the opportunity for you to apply for fu continued funding, um, which I've done for the second year of the book club. Um, and I have had conversations independently with staff at the Center for the Humanities about how to keep this project going to make sure that not when I leave, but significantly in advance of when I leave, that I can have conversations with the museum um, and perhaps be keeping my eye out for other graduate students that I know or that the center knows at my university that might be interested in, in continuing this. Um, the museum, I did talk to the museum and they um, expressed some potential for them having an intern um, so that this project could continue getting funding. Um, but yeah, that's definitely an important thing to consider with these projects that they can last. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, so that is a perfect question, um, because for uh, next season, we are going to be reading poems. Uh, so I think I have. So the, the two collections that we're using are, are collections of women's poetry for next semester, uh, or semester, next season. The Scars Upon My Heart is uh, World War I poetry, and Powder is uh, women who have, who have served in the military, uh, some short essays and some poetry, ranging, I believe, from Vietnam through the present. Um, and I have thought about poetry um, as something that could be brought in if we have a book uh, that we're reading for a month, and then you can read, you know, a poem or two in addition to that. And you can even bring a poem to the meeting. People don't have to prepare necessarily in advance. You can provide it in advance, but it's something that people can show up and not have to spend extra time. We can read it aloud together. Um, so that's a great idea and something, yeah, we'll be keeping in mind. Yes. Hmm. That is a great question. The only real outside voice that we've had so far, besides me, um, is, is the author, Erin Salello, who came in. And we did ask that she take part in only part of the discussion and that we reserved time um, to discuss the book um, with just, just the book club participants. Um, there are... The, the participants are very interested in learning, and I think that they would appreciate, you know, expert opinions. Um, and I like your suggestion of just something quick, 10 minutes. Um, but it's, it's not something we've done yet, but something we can, we can think about. Yeah, yeah, suggestion there. Good question. Hmm. Yeah. That's a great idea. And we do have a couple veterans in the group who um, I have in mind that I think would be willing to um, take that role. Um, so that's a great idea. Thank you. <laughs> 